So this is uh, a Nebe ground source, 17 kilowatt, three phase heat pump a, with a 300 liter accumulator tank a, and the, that's the, the connections coming in from the external boreholes onto this, the internal manifold system. As Rory said outside, normally that manifold system would be positioned outside in a chamber, but for display and to let us change controls and see the effect of one, you know, having less ground collector. So we brought it inside and could play about with the flow rates and see the effect it has on the machine. So as I say, you've got the, the heat source, the heat pump here, just with a flow and return into the buffer tank and then a simple flow and return system to underfloor manifold. One of them's up above the door there and there's another one in the cut. So there's two distribution systems uh, that are controlled off individual thermostats in the rooms, shutting down the, the different circuits. So the ground, at the moment, uh, I'll just see it's, that's it running. And it just started there and ran. I don't think anybody would be able to have told me that that was running. The, the, the loudest thing is actually the, the meter there that's registering the flow rate uh, for, the, for the heat meter system. So what we're, we're actually measuring the power going into this unit and we're measuring the, the heat output. We're bringing the water in at 11 degrees, which is really quite, you know, that's really warm. And we're, uh, it's going back out at 5.8. So we're extracting six degrees from the ground and we're producing Let's go back to this. We're producing a flow temperature of 46 degrees with a return temperature of 36. So we're adding 10 degrees into this heat, into this buffer tank. Uh, so we're taking that, that heat energy. What we're actually doing, if we go to this one, we're actually taking that six degrees, putting it into the, into the refrigerant. And then when we compress the refrigerant, we're ra racing, ra raising the hot, the gas temperature up to 76 degrees. So we're turning six degrees into 76 degrees. And we're doing that by compressing the gas, the refrigerant gas. And that's, that's why we get that efficiency. We're taking one level of heat and amplifying it. So that, this one's, as I say, it's, it's working very well at the moment. What we will get over time, as we start to extract, extract that energy, as Tim was saying, we will cool the ground down you know, the, the boreholes will cool down slightly. But hopefully if we can maintain six or seven degrees coming in, which if, the, if we've got a good design, then there's no reason we should still achieve COPs of in excess of five. You know, that, there's, there's no reason why we shouldn't get that. So it, it's quite nice in here to get a setup where you can actually see everything real time working. I'm not making anything up. The figures are here. Uh, at the moment, there's no hot water on you know demand on this circuit but it would just be piped off to go into an ordinary uh, high efficiency cylinder we have to make sure that we can exchange the heat away from the heat pump why is the vessel so so large 300 liters it's to absorb the energy if we have a heating if we have a heating load as we heat the building and zones start to close down the heating load actually changes and if we had it going straight without the buffer tank, it could, it could affect the flow rate no, through the system. But do you necessarily need a 300 litre vessel for this size system? The answer is no, if the system is well designed and the control system, if you have open circuits, but in something like an office block where you have different requirements for different areas, there is going to be changing conditions and to avoid there being any effect, so this, this buffers it. It, it, it smooths out. I thought it was always, or well, my understanding was 20 litres per kilowatt. It is, yes, that, that's the, that's Nibi's guidelines to, yeah. <laughs> it's a, so, it looks like so, I was trained by yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, 300, we've got 17 kilowatt, but we know that we have about four or five circuits that haven't any controls on it. So we can use that volume in the uncontrolled circuits, a uh, plus the volume in here to get your your uh, what 340 liters. I mean, we're not far away anyway. So it's uh, 
yes, you could say that's undersized, but it's not. And in fact, when, when NABI first came into the UK, we were encouraged with the, this control system, the way this control system thinks that there shouldn't be a need for this tank at all. But in the UK, because of the way the fluctuations in temperature we get, because we can go from you know, zero degrees to plus 14 or plus, you know, plus eight or nine in the space of six or, six or eight hours. Is that because of the compressor? Yeah, I mean, th this is a fixed speed compressor, yeah. which means that the output is always 17 kilowatts. Some other manufacturers may use inverter driven compressors, which means that as the system closes down and you're not using 17 kilowatts, the compressor slows down. Yeah. This doesn't do this. This is a fixed speed. But what they have is a very sophisticated control system to allow it, it to try and smooth out these peaks and troughs and just keep it evenly turning over. But the buffer, it's a kind of safety net. And we have found in this country, just either with the sort of reluctance to remove controls from systems. Also, if you think about it as not in a commercial sense, but in a domestic sense, we tend to have com compartmentalized house, houses. We have doors on most rooms, whereas the Scandinavian way is to have doors in the bedrooms and everything open plan, which means that if you've got everything open plan, there isn't much point in having control systems all over the house. You know, if you've got an area like this, there's no point having a stat at one side and a stat at the other and, and expecting that to give you any sort of reasonable control. Whereas in the UK, we tend to have dining room closed, lounge closed, and the, if you've got that system, then you, the need for controls is more uh, is more relevant. So it brings us back to where we'd love to just not have any controls in the system. Let this sophisticated control system do its job, and yet we we constantly come up against systems where we've got 10 or 15 different zones being controlled by thermostats, and people will go around and turn down 10 stats and not touch this because they're frightened of it because this is complicated, and that's trying to get that round through to people that if you turn down all the stats and this machine's look, doing something different, you're, you're creating an imbalance. It's not an efficient way to run it. But that's okay for me to, or, you know, it's quite technical to understand this system. But it is and it isn't. If, if, you get it, if you invest the time to set it up, and then it should be a leave it alone because you've set it up to your requirements and then you, you, could, you can walk away it's uh, that's the other thing. Everybody's different, and in offices and things, that's the problem you've got. That one person comes in, turns a stat down. Somebody else comes in, turns it up, and you know it's it, it's that's that's the reason for this to allow that flexibility.